Good morning, everybody. Uh, Chris Powell, GTI. Uh, today is 10 March 2020, and this is part of our series for emergency medicine, and we're going to talk about mechanical ventilation. I want to show you a calculation that you can use to determine uh, how to increase the rate. Many of us uh, have intubated patients, particularly in the emergency department, on the floor, or even in ICU. We intubate, and as soon as we intubate, we're calling for the pulmonologist or critical care physician to manage the ventilator. So we wanna help you get very proficient at um, setting up the initial ventilator. That's what this module is for. But I'm gonna give you an example of an ABG, how to determine what rate to increase or decrease to correct the respiratory acidosis. So very specific, someone that has acute respiratory failure, you've intubated them, and now you're left with looking at an ABG to make vent adjustments. I found this is very useful, particularly for those of you who work in a rural uh, setting where you intubate someone and you're left with bagging them or you have them on a ventilator and you have no idea how to manage it. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, and you guys just keep pushing through. I hope this is uh, something that you will use. It does take a lot of practice to get proficient at it, but we found this is very useful. Uh, all right, enjoy, and we'll never, never stop training. Okay, I want to share with you two things in this um, brief module. One is how to navigate GTI Academy for this particular module. And also we're gonna discuss how to calculate the rate based off of a high CO2 or hypercapnia following intubation. And then the, the last thing, just briefly, I'll show you how to set up a calculated based, uh, calculated based tidal volume off of the patient height and weight. This is predicted body weights. So that's what we'll cover real quick. Uh, this won't last very long at all, but it's very valuable. A lot of the students say um, this is very useful. The reason we want to share this with you is lots of particularly emergency department providers successfully intubate the patient, and then they don't know what to do. The respiratory therapist comes to you and says, hey, what uh, vent settings do you want? Hey, what mode ventilator? and you get deer in the headlights uh, look and you are just shocked and all you want to do is you pray that the ICU is accepting that patient and the intensivist or the pulmonologist is going to start managing that ventilator. So hopefully this will give you some proficiency uh, and namely confidence in the clinical setting if this does happen. So uh, I want to show you this real quick. This is um, part of our emergency medicine series, and it's also part of our emergency procedures cadaver lab uh, if you come to the on site. So, in GTI Academy, if you'll look, there is the title right up here, and it says emergency medicine series. This is module 1.3 of like 20 modules, but this is the principles of mechanical ventilation. So, this big screen right here is what you'll see for if you want to you know, take the PowerPoint or any other files. So there is little file folders here on this right bin. And if you look real close, there's a down arrow. This is the content. So you click on the content. You're going to see actually the PowerPoint. Some have voiceovers. Others are just static that you kind of peel through. But they're, they're pretty short. Um, most of them are not more than about 40 slides. So you can peel through them. Um, progressively in less than 30 minutes. However, you can always come um, come back. And if you look, you'll see there's resume where you left off. You can use that as well too. So I'm just going to click on the PowerPoint real quick, and I'll show you kind of what it looks like. It's going to show you just the slides. Uh, use the arrows to go back and forth, uh, and it gives you just basically all that content. So very important stuff. Next, um, you'll close this arrow. Do the down arrow. This is download. So typically this is literature uh, and references for our curricula. However, uh, most people say, man, I wish I had that card or slide. Many, many folks just download this, laminate some of the cards and put it in their pocket as a reference. So what we'll be talking about today is uh, 1.3, the second one. 
and it is a card for predicting body weight uh, and tidal volume based off of height and weight and sex. So we'll talk about that. But just really, really neat um, feature um, of the site as well too. And then of course there's a uh, course evaluation. And when we complete this video, this video also will be pushed up as well too. All right, so let's just move on. Uh, the first thing I want to do is show you uh, this table. It's about 16 or 17 years old. It's um, from ardsnet.org. If you look at the bottom real quick, I hope you can see that. And it's the ARDS network to uh, prevent lung injury after intubation. And these are some guidelines, very famous and standard, uh, really great way to start some initial uh, vent settings. So if you look, there's two different tables. One on the left right here is based for predicted body weight and tidal volume for females. And on the right is predicted body weight and tidal volumes for males. So for an example today, what I want to do is to look on the male side. We're going to look at the first column, which is height. If you'll notice, the height is in inches, feet and in inches. And then we can do total inches in the parentheses. The next column is the predicted body weight. I always think this is like ideal body weight. It's based off of population health. So this is what they should weigh ideally. And then these next four columns, uh, four, five, six through eight, are the number of cc's per kilogram that is recommended for that height and weight. So let's look real closely. We're going to use the example of a six foot one male. So we're going to go down the column and we're going to look right here to six one. And this uh, patient is 73 inches. His predicted body weight should be 79 or we'll just round it off to 80 kilos. So a lot of folks ask me, hey, would he really stay on the low end around the four or you go all the way up? I'm, I sort of stay in the range between four to six unless they're super sick. Um, that's a little bit more advanced uh, than we'll start, but I always recommend usually about six unless they're just super critically ill. So this table is going to tell us that the tidal volume for a 6'1", 73-inch male should be about 479. So that's the example for setting up initial tidal volumes. I always, I have a laminated card for this and I stick it in my pocket. It's easy uh, and you don't have to really think a lot. So uh, these tables are very valuable. Uh, remember, artsnet.org. And you can also go on GTI Academy if you take the course and just download that. It's very valuable. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, I want to show you how to adjust the ventilator to accommodate for hypercapnia. Many patients that are admitted, particularly in the emergency department or say on the floor and had a rapid response and you had to intubate on a hospitalist service, or even a patient that's in the ICU uh, that was not ventilated and developed an acute respiratory failure and required intubation, uh, you're going to intubate, set up the initial uh, mode and the settings for the ventilator but then you're going to get an ABG and you're going to have to adjust the vent. So I want to kind of give you this little skill set. It's pretty easy, uh, but I want to kind of give you an example. So let's talk about the vent setting. So let's just say you just intubated a patient. You ordered that the patient be put in a volume control or VC. Now, when I give orders or even write orders electronically or just handwritten, what I try to do for vent setting is one, I put the mode first and I give the order verbally like that too. And then I sort of separate oxygenation and ventilation parameters separately and it kind of keeps me organized and I just do it over and over again and that repetitiveness provides some standardization for the way we give orders. So for the oxygenation parameters, you're going to give orders for FiO2 and of course PEEP and that's the only parameters that will affect oxygenation or your SAT or your PAO2, your partial pressure of oxygen on the arterial side that's from your ABG. Next ventilation, so the ventilation is of course really CO2. So those parameters in volume control are going to be your tidal volume, your respiratory rate, and if you had uh, SIMV, you would have pressure support. But as you recall, volume control does not have pressure support. So we won't talk about that here today. So let's give an example of this. So 
um, let's just say you intubated a patient, the initial settings were 100% FO2, a PEEP of 5. Uh, if you'll remember, our tidal volume from that patient was 479. You initially set his respiratory rate to 10. You've intubated, you gave these orders, you say ABGs in 30 minutes, you're praying that they are sent to the ICU or a pulmonologist or a critical care intensivist shows up to start managing, but they don't. What do you do? You're going to look at the ABG and you're going to be able to manage this using just one formula. It's really great. So let's look at the ABG. The ABG comes back. We're going to say it's a pH of 7.28 a PaCO2 of 52, the PaO2 is only 62, and with the bicarb of 21. So I need to adjust some parameter over here to correct this respiratory acidosis. See, he's hypercapnic. We know PaCO2 should be between 35 and 45. And I do want them to get close to the range, but you never want to have drastic changes. I would never try to increase the rate or the tidal volume to get to a PAC of 35. I actually would be happy um, if I could just get it to uh, maybe a 40. So that's what I want to do. My goal is to correct this acidemia, and I want the PACO2 to be 40. How do I do that? Great formula. So first you're going to do the current CO2 and divide that by the desired CO2. That's what you want it to be. That's going to be our 40. It's a cross multiplication formula and it's really based off a of minute ventilation, but we kind of tweaked it a little bit. It's very valuable. So over here we're going to have rates. The unknown rate is what we're going to order to correct it. So that's going to get the X or the unknown. And then I simply just look at the respiratory rate and it's currently 10. So you're going to do the current rate. All right, got the formula? All right, here we go. So let's plug these in, okay? I'm going to try to, um, I'll put them right over here. So the current CO2 is 52. The desired CO2 is 40. The unknown rate is what we're going to find out. And then the current rate is 10. It's right there. So 10. Easy. Cross multiplication. So 40 times X equals 52 times 10, which is going to be 520. And if you divide that out, it's going to give you 13. 13. So all I have to do is increase this rate from 10 to 13, then get an ABG in 30 minutes to one hour. Try this. I've taken care of lots of patients, uh, 20 years. 3,500 patients, a third of those on the ventilator, you know, times 17 years. Pretty consistent. You will be amazed how accurate this is. So try it in the clinical setting. We'll review it one more time. All you have to do if you're trying to correct the CO2 is take the current CO2, divide it by the desired CO2, cross multiply with the unknown X of the rate you want, and divide it by the current rate. And that should give you an X of um, the adjusted CO2. All right, guys, hope that's helpful.